What is going on, guys, and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name's Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Now, this is a video that I was hoping to make in possibly a week or so if Michigan ended up making the national championship game. But unfortunately, after their loss yesterday to UCLA, we know that's now not the case, and the Michigan Wolverine season is now over. I was hoping that this video would have a bit more of a happier sort of entail with it, um, but with the loss, it's sort of not the case. A bit of a disappointing end to the season, but I still think there's a ton of, ton of positives to take away from this year. So we're going to be breaking those down today. We'll be breaking down sort of just my overall opinion of what I thought on the season. We'll get to sort of the stats and the overall game and the way sort of our schedule looked. And then also looking ahead to next year and obviously that great 2021 recruiting class that we do have coming in. Um, but in my opinion, I mean, yes, there's a disappointing end to the year. But I think this was a really, really positive year when you look at it as a whole. Michigan was a team that came into the year with really low expectations. And in my opinion, it was as close to a season that you can have in college basketball in what you would call sort of a retooling or rebuilding year. Michigan lost two players that were very, very significant to the way that Michigan has run both offensively and defensively in the past several years. You lost John Teske, who has made tremendous developments as one of Michigan's bigger men over the course of the past few years. And then you also lost Xavier Simpson. In my opinion, one of the best point guards in the country that we saw for the really the last two years of Xavier Simpson's career. And we replaced those guys with transfers. You had Sean D. Brown coming in. You had Mike Smith, who had a lot of questions around them. You know, Mike Smith particularly coming from the Ivy League. And yes, he was a good scorer over there. But not only, you know, are you going to much bigger competition in the Big Ten, but also he had huge, massive shoes to fill, obviously, in place of Xavier Simpson. And we'll break down the stats and sort of how those guys did um, later on in the video. But they really did a fantastic job. And I think Juwan Howard, it speaks so highly of him and his ability to sort of get this team and the way he did this year to play collectively in a team that really started the year again with no expectations to be right at the top of the country in terms of the rankings with two of the best teams that I've seen, you know, in the past little while in Gonzaga and Baylor, I think again is such an accomplishment. And you look at the recruiting class that again, we're gonna talk about later in the video um, and his ability to now be getting recruits and overall changing the program for the better. I think the Michigan Wolverines and the Michigan Wolverines fans have a lot to be looking forward to um, for the next really several years now. You look at the schedule, we started with an 11 game winning streak and what a fun ride that was. We had some nice ranked wins throughout the entire season. Um, we started the season a little shaky, some not so great games against Oakland and Bowling Green. But what I really liked about scheduling that sort of lesser competition at the beginning of the year was that it gave sort of our new team, our new look team, you know, after losing Simpson, after losing Teske, it gave these new guys sort of an ability to get a chance to learn how to work together, get a chance to learn the system, and then sort of be prepared, more prepared to face those better ranked teams later on in the season. Because we didn't look good in those first games, but I think, you know, we figured it out. And at the end of the season, and as we progressed towards the season, sort of our strengths on the team came from those games. Our ability, you know, one of our biggest strengths on offense to score with assists. And even simpler than that, just being able to run our offense with ball movement and getting people touches. We did such a great job of that this year, and I'm really, really proud of what Michigan was able to do in the first part of the season. We then lost to Minnesota, um, lost to a ranked Minnesota team in Minnesota. That was the time they were playing some fantastic basketball at home. Um, you know, Minnesota wasn't a great road team this year, but they were very solid at home. And, you know, they didn't end the season well by any means, but Minnesota was a fairly quality team. Then we put together another win streak. We had a bit of a tough end to the season. Obviously lost to four Illinois um, with no Dasunmu over there. We lost to Michigan State as well in that second game of the home and home. Um, to end the actual regular season and during that time I mean we didn't have Eli Brooks for part of it and you know unlike sort of what I thought with Villanova where you take Colin Gillespie out they're a really systemless basketball team when you take um, Eli Brooks or Isaiah Livers like we saw you know against UCLA this Michigan team struggles and they really need sort of everybody to, to be there for the offense and and even defense to work sort of at the best of their ability. Now, Michigan at the end of the season filled in the shoes of Isaiah Livers fairly well. We won some big games. 
Um, but yeah, I think it comes down to injuries, obviously, at the later part of the season. We lost a close one to Ohio State in the actual Big Ten Conference Tournament, which was an unfortunate game, hoping that coming into the tournament we would end up getting Isaiah Livers back. That, unfortunately, was not the case. We've watched his last game um, as a Michigan Wolverine. Michigan beats Texas Southern, beats LSU in a very good high-scoring game. And LSU and Florida State, the way we played against those um, teams, being able to you know put up north of 75 points into 85, 86 points against LSU, um, I really thought that we were looking good offensively. We were doing a great job defensively of being able, with a smaller rotation, to play really intense defense without fouling. And that's what I thought was really impressive. And that's why sort of I was blindsided by this UCLA loss. We looked very, very out of sync, particularly offensively. But at the end of the day, I mean, to say that we didn't think at some point that this could be the sort of scenario where we look out of sync without Isaiah Livers, I mean... I think every Michigan fan at the back of their head knew that at some point that would be coming. And it ended up being the case against UCLA. Now you look at that UCLA box score and a lot of guys that were stepping up for us before didn't. Hunter Dickinson had 11 points, shot 5 of 10, but had 4 turnovers. Franz Wagner shot 1 of 10. Somebody who's been so consistent at the back end of the season. Mike Smith, 1 of 7. Eli Brooks, 3 of 8. Nobody really stepped up. We had a ton of turnovers. And I mean, when you look at the box score, especially what Michigan did offensively, there's no way that we were going to win that game. Now, what's really disappointing about this, though, is we held UCLA to 51 points. And to say that we lost a game and we're not in the Final Four because we couldn't score over 51 points, really, really disappointing. But again, I think it's just, you know, a disappointing end to a really, really positive season. Over the course of the year, though, um, a lot of positives, as I was saying before. Hunter Dickinson, our freshman center, um, who was our best recruit coming into the year, but wasn't even ranked in the top 40 of the recruiting rankings, I think. Did such a great job. 14 points, 7.5 boards, um, 1.5 blocks. His shooting numbers were fairly good. And again, not only was he replacing John Teske, who was such a big part of Michigan last year, um, but he's only a freshman. And he did such a great job against some of the more talented big men in the Big Ten. Luca Garza, Nate Reavers of really shutting them down. And I think, again, that's a credit to Juwan Howard and his, obviously, history of, of playing that position and his ability to sort of get both Hunter Dickinson and Austin Davis to be able to play big roles for this Wolverines team. You had Isaiah Livers doing what Isaiah Livers does. I think he's the backbone of this team. 13 points, 6 boards, 2 assists. Wagner sort of stepped up this year. He was really, really good at some points in the season. 12.5 points, 6.5 rebounds, 3 assists. Active defensively with over 1 block and 1 steal a game. Eli Brooks, pretty good. Just under double-digit scoring. Had 3.1 boards, 3.1 assists. Mike Smith was great, I thought. He was really good at facilitating the Michigan offense and replacement of Xavier Simpson. 9 points, 2.8 rebounds, 5.3 assists. He was one of the best um, point guards, I think, in the country in terms of being able to facilitate the basketball. Um, and I was really pleased with what we got from him this year. You know, if you had any doubts about what some of these smaller conference players can do, you know, coming out of the Ivy League like Mike Smith does... Talented players, in my opinion, are talented players, and Mike Smith proved that. And then, of course, Sean D. Brown, 8.3.1 boards. Um, and he was a great, great, great addition to have off the bench. I think he's the best sixth man in the league. When Michigan's offense was dry, you could count on Sean D. Brown to come into the game, give you some quick threes. His ability to score in bunches, the energy that he brought to this team I think was so impressive I love Sean D. Brown he was one of my favorite players on this team shot the three ball at just under 42 percent he did some big things for this Wolverines particularly offensively but I think he was also a tremendous defender um, on the perimeter and that's why Michigan I think as a whole team was really so good at defense um, particularly guarding that three ball now looking ahead obviously the 2020 2021 season was never really supposed to be our main year because we have this recruiting class coming in next year that's ranked number one in the country i think our best basketball recruiting class ever and i'm really excited about it. two five stars three four stars and a three star highlighted by three mcdonald's all americans you got caleb houston 
Uh, Caleb Houston, you got Musa Diabate, and you also got Kobe Bufkin. Three really, really solid guys. You got a power forward in Houston. You got a power forward as well in Diabate, and you got a combo guard in Bufkin. And I think Jawan Howard, um, from what we saw this year, I think is going to be really, really able to work with particularly these bigger guys, um, but with really this entire recruiting class as a whole. Now, we don't know exactly who's going to be um, returning from the Wolverines roster this year um you know franz wagner isn't officially leaving the wolverines yet neither is hunter dickinson um so you know we still have some re returning players possibly and then on the bench as well you know the guys that we had um recruited from last year you got terrence williams jace howard zeb jackson i expect all to have bigger roles this year uh, it's unfortunate we've probably seen isaiah livers in his last game as a wolverine um mike smith as well a bunch of other guys there um, and I just want to wish all of those guys, you know, a, a great congratulations on what they were able to do for their Michigan Wolverines career um, and just the best wishes for them moving forward. But I am really, really excited to see this new recruiting class in action. Um, I think Juwan Howard and the rest of the coaching staff has done a great job of putting together a roster and really flipping over this program, I think, to something that us Michigan Wolverines fans have not really seen in terms of really the top high-end like the best recruits in the country and i think it's just super super exciting we should be starting the year ranked i think in the top five so again gonna be some new experiences for wolverines fans next year disappointing end to this season but we have so much to look forward to coming up but anyways guys if you did enjoy today's video make sure to leave a thumbs up subscribe to touchdowns to home runs for more michigan wolverines and college basketball content just like this um but anyways guys let me know your comments and your thoughts on the michigan wolverines and their season down in the comment section below. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.